Hey yo, what's going on everyone? Nathan here. So last August, I made an ultimate comparison guide between GoodNotes 5 and Notability. And so at the end of that video, I came to the conclusion and I decided on going with GoodNotes 5 for my upcoming semester for almost like no good reason at all. It just kind of happened to be like in the rotation of apps for me. And I just wanted to give it another go. And so someone actually commented in that video and they asked me to make a follow-up video to see if GoodNotes 5 lived up to the expectations that I had for it. And so now after using this for a full semester, again, I have a list of five really good things that GoodNotes 5 did well, and I also have a list of five things where it did let me down. So that's what this video is going to be right now, and I think the best place to start is with the goods. So the first thing that I love about GoodNotes 5, and you'll probably notice it as soon as you open up the app as well, but it's got to be its organizational system. So GoodNotes 5 is very much like a desktop where you can just create folders and put documents and notebooks inside of those folders, and you can even put other folders inside of them, and it's super easy to organize everything. So if you check right here, this is kind of how I organize my setup. I start off with the first page as just kind of being like very general things, usually semesters and then whatever else. So I have like my career that's like resume, um, it's like job applications, things like help me prepare for that. But then I got my semesters right here and it's just so nice to have one big folder with everything in it. So if you go in there and let's click on my last semester right here, masters part one, and as you can see, now I have all of my classes and then other like supporting documents that don't like necessarily fit into them. But it's just so nice and simple. I have all five of my classes there. Again, click on one of them. There's all my assignments, my homeworks, just everything that you could need. I can put more folders in them. And if you wanted to, it's just almost like unlimited layers of organization. So I love that about GoodNotes 5 and that's number one for me. So the second thing that I love about GoodNotes 5 and I used it all the time, every single time I was like taking notes or whatever, and that are the tabs at the top of the page. So when you go into a note and then you open up different notes, you kind of have like a tab section at the top and you can easily just tap on whichever one you want and you can go from section to section, page, whatever you want. And it's just such a nice way to jump between homeworks. While you're studying, you can have an answer guide right there. You just tap on it and then you can go back to the other one that you're currently working on. And it's just such a nice way to organize everything even further than just the folders. And I use this all the time. It reminds me of like a browser on your laptop. It is super nice and convenient and I like just easily switching between notes while I'm doing homework, studying, or anything else like that. So the third thing that I love about GoodNotes 5, and I'm not saying that it's not in Notability, I know it is, but just specifically for this app, I love its favorites tab. And so it was actually a recent update and they moved it. It used to be up here at the top left where the mic is now, and this is to like record lectures and then listen to the playback later on. So now if you wanna find your favorites tab or actually favorite a page, you have to go to ellipses at the top right, and then it's gonna be the first one and it's gonna be add to favorites. And then so now all you do is you go to the page selector at the top left and you scroll over to your favorites tab and you can see the one I just added there. So this right here is a photovoltaics class that I'm in and they're big lectures and it can be very easy to like misplace pages or not find them when you want to. So all you have to do again is go to the page selector at the top left, go to favorites and you can see all the pages that I have favorited currently everything with equations on it. I always favor it to save for later. And then you just tap on which one you want. It brings you right to that page. It's super easy and helps you further organize everything. And it makes you be able to find important information when you want. So big fan of the favorites tab with GoodNotes 5. So number four has got to be the note searcher. And this is such a cool feature. So right here at the top left, there's that little like magnifying glass. And if you click on it, you can type in any word that you want and it'll scan all of your documents for either text or your handwriting of that word. So for example, I'm gonna type in materials right here and you can see it found three matches. There's text right there, there's text right there. And then underneath that, there's my handwriting on a page. You click on it and it takes you to that page or that document, wherever it is, and you can easily find it. And it's right there, it's highlighted in this yellowish orange. And it's honestly just such a cool feature how we can search your handwriting. So maybe just try like writing a little neat so you can, you know, it can give it a little easier time to find this. But I don't think my handwriting is that neat. It's really not. I think I have chicken scratch for handwriting, 
but it found it. And I think, again, this is just a great way, like the favorites toolbar, just to find notes, anything you could be looking for within all these documents, especially as semesters keep going on, you get more documents, you can lose things easily. So this search feature is awesome. And then my fifth favorite thing about GoodNotes 5 has just gotta be its writing experience. Something about GoodNotes 5, I think it makes my handwriting a little neater than what it is on Notability. I don't know what it is, if there's like a little bit extra like assistance, kind of like in Procreate, how you can, you know, like assist lines so they're a little more smoothened out, a little more curved. There's no settings for that in this, but it's gotta be doing something because I love the way that it actually does feel when I'm writing. Anything that I can like be making, I make a lot of diagrams, graphs, and shapes, as you can see as I'm going through these notes right here. I love the fact where you can like outline a shape, a circle or a box, and then it can autofill. That's like one of my biggest things. So anytime I write equations in my notes, cause I'm an engineer and I write equations all the time. I always use this purple pen right here and I just square it off and then it auto like fills in with like a slightly fainted purple. It's super nice. I like it. It really makes finding equations in my notes that much easier. And again, I just think the writing experience on GoodNotes 5 is fantastic. So just like any other app, GoodNotes 5 is not perfect. And so here are the things that I really didn't like about it while using it all semester. And the first is that it really doesn't like PowerPoints at all. And so what I mean by that is like importing a PowerPoint, text and everything on it is just messed up and not where it should be. Let me show you what I mean. So I'm gonna go to Blackboard right here and Blackboard is what my school uses for assignments, classes and everything like that. So I'm actually gonna go to this class right here, MA 600. I'm gonna go to course content, content again, chapter one, and it's in PowerPoint format. So I press the ellipses at the top right and then I can export it and I can move it into GoodNotes 5. So once when it's done importing and I scroll through, you can see that some things just aren't quite how they should be. So you can see like this page right here, this is in the format as it actually is. This one right here, there's actually text blurbs over text itself and it makes it hard to read. Um, just continuing through, like you can see how this text doesn't line up in that box perfectly. And then equations are the absolute worst. Like usually equations like <laughs> just don't come over on this and there's just big open spots left over in your PowerPoints. So what I would usually have to do is actually download it on my laptop, then open up PowerPoint, save it as a PDF, and then airdrop that to my iPad. And it's just such a process. And I still currently to this day have to do that to get these, you know, like these slides to look right. And I don't know, it's just, it's something that really bothers me about GoodNotes 5. And so that's number one. So the second thing is that I can't stand the fact that GoodNotes 5 only lets you pre-save three colors. So I know that you can like double tap on it right here and then it'll open up to a bunch of colors you can pre-save, but it's the fact that it's just more than one tap away. And this is something that I love about Notability. It's its favorite toolbar. We can have as many colors and styles of pens right there. And it's just one tap away. I love that. And that's what like what draws me back to Notability because as you can see with my notes, I have so many colors in my notes to make things in graphs stand out. Specific colors to me mean specific things. Like I always highlight and circle my equations in purple, just as I'm scrolling through, I know what the equations are. It's just, I'm always changing colors. And the fact that I have to always do more than just one tap. And most of the time it's more than a double tap because it doesn't register. It's like a triple tap you have to do. It's actually quite frustrating. And I really wish that they would just add a favorites bar like Notability and have as many colors there, I really think that they need to do that. So the third thing, and I know that this is gonna start sounding like a comparison to Notability, it's not. It's just as someone coming from Notability and having like these luxuries, I guess you could say, to not having it, it's really just bothering me. But number three has gotta be no dashed or dotted lines. And again, I love that in Notability as an engineering major, I actually use a lot of dash and dotted lines on graphs all the time to like connect points, bring things up from different axes and stuff like that. And the fact that in Notability, you can make perfectly straight lines by drawing a, a dotted line with the pencil there and holding it and it like snaps to a perfect line. I love that about Notability. And the fact that they don't have any sort of dotted or dashed line pen option in this, it really is unfortunate because I do it all the time. And then hand drawing a dashed and dotted line on especially like a touch screen with a stylus, it's just never the prettiest. And I really don't like that about this. 
I think it's such a simple add that GoodNotes 5 can do. So number three is no dashed and dotted lines. So the fourth thing that I don't like about GoodNotes 5 is printing up your handwritten notes. So what I mean by that is that if you export your notes like this, so you go to the top left, the export button, and you go to export this page or all of it. And I always do a PDF export, I email it to myself. And then when I go to print up the notes, they don't quite line up on printer paper as they do on these notes because of the good notes page size. So what I mean by that is if you go to the top right ellipses right here and then you go to change template, then the top left you see A4 white paper and you click on that and there's just different types and styles of papers and page sizes here. And I've tried a whole bunch of them and I cannot seem to find which one works perfectly with printing up on your typical standard, what is it, like 11 by eight and a half um, printer paper. It always seems to be just too big, so when you print it up, it actually cuts off the edges of my notes, because I pretty much do go pretty close to the edges of my notes, like if you can see here, and that's something that I really don't like and it always bothers me. I always have trouble exporting my pages, emailing them to myself, and then I go to print them, and then they're not fully there. And it's just such a headache because then I have to come back here, I have to resize all my notes, and it honestly is just quite a bummer when it does happen. So that's number four that I don't like. So the final thing that I don't like about GoodNotes 5 has gotta be the fact that you can't move around the tabs in the tab section. So as someone who likes to stay super organized, I really don't like the fact that I can't just move a tab over and keep all like my MAE 600 tabs over to the left all my MFE 636 classes in the middle and all the tabs and notes and everything. It's super uh, frustrating how you just can't slide it over, like not like Google Chrome, but you know, you can just move a tab over, same with Internet Explorer. I love that about that. And you would think you'd be able to do it here, but you can't, and especially when like going from document, document, like looking at old notes, updating new ones, doing a homework, whatever, and looking at a lecture and, and going back and forth. The fact you can't just have both of them together unless you quit out of the other ones and then reopen them up in the order you want, which just, it doesn't always happen like that. That's something that does bother me and it has bothered me all semester. It's such a, like another simple thing I think GoodNotes 5 could implement to make their app that much better. But that's the fifth thing I did not like about GoodNotes 5. So to answer that comment on that comparison video I made back last year, Yes, GoodNotes 5 did live up to my expectations. It's a phenomenal note-taking app and it has everything that anyone could need. And the fact that it's a one-time purchase, you don't have to like pay for a subscription like Notability. This is probably still the go-to note-taking app for college students, I would say. Um, Notability is right there too if you're willing to pay that subscription. But GoodNotes 5 did do everything that I wanted it to do. But as you can see, it's not perfect. And there were some things that did bother me about this note-taking app. So that's going to be the end of the video. If you enjoyed it or if you learned something new, then please don't forget to hit the like button down below and subscribe. And as always, have a great day, everyone. And cheers.